So you want a game, but you're saving money to move out of your mom's basement? Huh, I've got the solution for you. Today we're gonna build the $100 gaming PC with this here Lenovo ThinkCenter M75Q. It's got a Ryzen 2400GE at 3.2 gigahertz with eight gigs of RAM. It came with no storage, but we're gonna toss in a one terabyte NVMe that I got for about $40. That's gonna bring us up to a total of about $100 for this gaming PC. We're gonna put it through its paces, run through about 16 or so games and see how it performs in 2025. Let's get into it. Our build today is gonna to be really simple. We've got our Think Center here. And the only other thing that we're gonna need is some storage. Right here is a one terabyte NVMe. So we've got about $55 in this Lenovo and about another $40 in the storage for it. So right under about $100 for this gaming build. We'll open up the top cover. We've got a SATA disk holder here, which is really cool. So if you ever wanted to expand your setup to have more storage, you've definitely got that opportunity. So we'll pull the little set screw out here for our SSD caddy. We'll gently flip it over. You can see our eight gigabytes of RAM in there. It looks like, uh, looks like Apple RAM. But what we'll do is we'll push in our NVMe drive slide it right in and uh, secure it with the plastic set screw here and our build is practically done we'll reassemble slide our caddy back in insert our set screw once again it's all tightened up Put our lid back on. Our build is complete. We're ready to install Windows and Steam and get gaming. Our first game is BattleBit. At 1080p low presets, we saw anywhere from 45 to 60 frames per second. The gameplay was fluid and played without any stuttering or visual issues. Balloons TD6 was totally playable at a locked 60 frames per second. It's highly likely this game's going to run on any hardware that you install it on. Uh, little games like this often run great on potato PCs. The classic Rockstar game Bully plays very, very well on this PC. 30 frames per second with medium shadows at 1080p. Gameplay is smooth and seamless. You want to get serious for your little face? We don't have a bar on the door, just a soda machine. City Skylines was playable at 900p. We saw frame rates from 16 to about 25 frames per second on the lowest settings possible. I expected that performance would be a little bit higher in this game. It's definitely not an ideal way to play City Skylines, but with a lower frame rate like this, it's really not a deal breaker in simulation games. Counter-Strike 2 at 1080p low settings. We saw about 30 frames per second on average with some really, really low frame dips. It's playable, but just Barely playable. Certainly wouldn't want to recommend a system like this for playing competitive Counter-Strike. Doom at 900p was anywhere from 30 frames a second to 45 frames per second on the low preset. Overall gameplay was pretty smooth and pleasurable. Forza Horizon 5, we got a RAM warning saying that our PC didn't meet the minimum requirements to run the game. However, we push past that and set, this, and set the video settings to 900p 
all low settings with FSR at balanced gave us a good mix between 30 and 40 frames per second. Not an ideal way to play Forza, but certainly playable. Grand Theft Auto V Legacy Edition, 1080p normal settings. We saw anywhere from 30 to 40 frames per second, generally hovering right around 35 with an occasional dip into the 20 frames per second. But overall super playable um, and overall not a bad experience whatsoever for GTA V. Or five there, or under there, or whatever you wear. Half-Life 2 Deathmatch, nearly locked at 60 frames a second on high settings everywhere, 1080p with super smooth gameplay. This is an older title, one that we would expect that would run perfectly on hardware like this. Left 4 Dead, 1080p, 60 frames per second, super smooth gameplay. This is another older title that should run well on low-end hardware. <laughs> It wouldn't be one of my videos if we didn't include something about Minecraft. We're playing Minecraft at 1080p with Super Vanilla Shaders. We're getting around 40 to 60 ah. frames per second. Gameplay is smooth and super playable. Quake 2 ran at 1080p at 60 frames per second with no issues, which isn't surprising for an older title like this, but one that's still very relevant today. Great gameplay for a very classic game. Quake 3 ran great at 90 frames a second. But the resolution was 1280 by 1024, certainly not updated for today's widescreens. The resolution is a little bit wonky, but the gameplay was rock solid here. Red Dead Redemption 2 at 720p, all settings on low with AMD. FSR set to performance, we saw anywhere from 25 frames a second to about 30 frames a second. Certainly wouldn't recommend running this game on this hardware. We also got a warning that said we didn't have enough RAM when we first started this game. Overall very low performance, not a great experience. Skyrim at 1080 high settings, we ran right around 30 frames per second with the occasional dip into the high 20s. Overall, very, very playable. An outsider. No reason to stop in Kynesgrove. Keep moving. Stray at 720 low settings with a 90% resolution scale gave us anywhere from 28 or so to around 30 frames per second. Certainly not ideal, but definitely playable for a title like this. Hey, gaming's cool, but can we run an LLM on this hardware? I installed a Llama and ran a 3 billion parameter model Llama 3.2, and the performance was actually very surprising. Super respectable, as you can see here. So to conclude our video today, what did we learn? Well, we learned that the Think Center here isn't so bad for some day-to-day -day gaming. All of your older titles are most certainly going to work. Any of your new stuff's definitely not going to work that well. Some of the limitations of a system like this are expandability. There really isn't any room for expansion in this chassis here, not like a desktop PC would have. Other limitations to this specific device, 8 gigabytes of RAM doesn't get us very far, but within your budget, you could probably search around on eBay, 
pull in another couple of sticks of RAM or expand it to 16 gigabytes of RAM would do wonders for a little machine like this. But at the end of the day, a little PC like this is perfect for some occasional gaming and definitely office work.